And we are back. The Center for Bronx Not for Profits is convening a training and resource sharing organization which strengthens the capacity of local community leaders and organizations serving the Bronx and other boroughs. The center is hosting its annual conference celebrating women on March 24th. And the question is, what do those need to know prior to going, well, I should say prior to attending? And joining us now, we got the Center for Bronx Nonprofits at Hostos Community College's Eileen Newman. And uh, Eileen, good to have you and good to be with you one more time. And uh, it's an exciting time for this month as we are celebrating Women's History Month. Right, it is. It's very exciting. And, and this is an exciting way to celebrate it by bringing women together. Um, this year, as in the, the last few years, we're bringing women together virtually rather than in person. <clears throat> but it's, it's, been, um, it's been very successful to do that because we can also get women from, from all over the world who find out about this conference and sign in. So it's, it's always a great opportunity for women to share with each other what they do and who they are. It's a diverse opportunity too, Eileen. I think when you talk about the women that you have coming to the conference, there's a lot of diversity there. And for people, they have an opportunity to tap into a variety of different trades. Right, it's, it's, it's a conversation about what women do, but the do is pretty broad because we have people from, well, our, our keynote speaker is Misha Porter, who was the, um, I, I always forget whether it's a chancellor of the New York City Public Schools and is now the first CEO of the Bronx Foundation. So she's going to be setting us off. And then we have 15 women who answer three questions. Who are you? What do you do? And why do you do it? And so we have a, a base that goes from artists to uh, an actress who, if people remember the show Kimmy Schmidt, they might recognize Sol Miranda, she'll be with us. We also have many, many people who are running nonprofits. We have the head of Bronx Defenders, the head of Community Resource Exchange. We have people who are also working in the for-profit sector. We have a woman who has been working for years in a neonatal um, portion of a hospital and she'll be talking and then who became a filmmaker made a film about that and then we have a woman who started a nonprofit when she had um, a preemie child and her nonprofit is dedicated to making clothes for those little lives and and providing um, all of this for people who also have preemie children and are are sort of unprepared for what do you how do you clothe them what do you do to keep them warm so it's it's a very diverse group of people. So as I said before, we talked about diversity and what that actually means, right? Having a diverse group of people. So what is the takeaway that you're hoping when you have this group of people who get together, have conversations, seeing these people in diverse backgrounds, certainly there's a takeaway. So the take, takeaway that we always hope for is that there will be people who will have an opportunity to meet people, even though it's virtual still, there is opportunity to exchange information so that maybe they want to work together on a project. Maybe they just want to know each other. Maybe their, their eyes will be open to something uh, that they didn't even realize existed because some of these nonprofits have and, and the for-profits have been a little bit off the radar. So it's, it's all about communication, but it's also all about highlighting what women do, what and, and by that, I mean, not just the answer to what do I do? And then we think of it as a job, but it's what do, how do women balance everything in their lives? The, the conversations began and the conference began when I started to think about the women who are attending Hostos Community College. Um, I think the numbers are up to around 65% women who attend the college. In some many cases, they have children, they may be um, dealing with aging parents, they may have jobs. And I started to think about how much we need to honor them and all the other women who are juggling so, so many things in their lives. And and today I was, I was listening to um, some of the, the programming that's all about um, Women's History Month and um, International Women's Day. And somebody used the word boldness. And I think that's what we're celebrating. We're really celebrating the boldness and the tenacity of women that 
that every day we we recognize and we see and we 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 always say that this is a conference dedicated to women doing extraordinary things and they're women who wouldn't call themselves extraordinary and that's what makes it so special and go over once again our focus for this year what's the focus that you have going on the focus is really this year i feel like the focus is the power of women and and the the power and the boldness of women. We always have a, a sort of a, a, a one-off topic. And I think that's that's really what it is. And it's also, but I always think it's also about women and the relationships that they build and that they build within their community and that they build outside so that they are continuing to create community. So this is an opportunity for women to create community in the Bronx. What's the experience like for you, given the fact that here you are hosting women, all these women getting together, and professional women with various expertise. Uh, what's that experience like for you as a convener, and then just also as a woman? It's amazing. I love doing this. I love everything about it. I love the fact that in December, I start putting the names of the 15 women together. I And it makes me think, oh, I know these incredible people that other people need to know. And the other thing that always happens on a more dramatic level is that I always cry. Someone makes me cry. This year, when I was talking to somebody about, and I won't tell you who it is, but when I was talking to somebody about being being part of the conference, I cried in my office. I didn't even make it to the conference. So <laughs> I was a mess before I even got here. So it's it's because I'm so in awe of, of the extraordinary things that women are doing every day and it's, and they're unrecognized. And, you know, if you think about a day where you, you get up in the morning and you've got kids to take care of, and you've got a class that you, that you're trying to get to, and you're, you're figuring out how, and that the trains don't work and, and somehow women get through. I, I'm um, also a, a teacher in, in the graduate, um, one of the graduate programs at Lehman. And I had women, it's a one year master's. It's a killer, but fabulous right here at Lehman. And I had a woman who would get up every morning at three o'clock in the morning to do her work for the program because mm -hmm. everything else started at five o'clock in the morning, including her kids. There's so many diverse stories that you can talk about because, you know, you got single parents, you got uh, divorced, you got those who are really right. trying to make it after being uh, after being laid off, the COVID story. Um, are yes. you hearing anything that really resonates with you? Uh, you talked about one, but is there is there any other stories that really resonate with you that really say, man, the power of a woman? I think that... Um, one of the people who is going to be speaking is Justine Alderman, who is the executive director of Bronx Defenders. And she and she may tell this story, so I may be telling it, but it's always great to hear it twice. So Justine was a young lawyer. She, um, she was in court. Um, there was a, a situation where somebody was ar arrested and, and was going to be imprisoned. And Justine started to cry. She, and the the judge said, she's never going to be a, a lawyer. She's never going to be a good lawyer. And instead, Justine is an incredible lawyer who has been running this organization, help, not only helping families whose um, family member might be incarcerated, but dealing with all the things that happen when that happens, housing, a, a loss of an income. And I think that that Justine is an example of bringing humanity into such a difficult situation. Yeah. And so she's, yeah, she's one of my examples. Well, and she's fun. <laughs> looking forward to seeing and hearing about the virtual conference. Of course, I won't be attending, but we'll get, we'll check back in with you. And uh, you let me know. Uh, how it goes, and uh, certainly That's I know that there's a lot of planning going on, but thank you, Eileen, for being with us and yeah. sharing. You're welcome. It's been great to see you again. Oh, good to see you again, Eileen Newman. All right. Well, for more information, if you want, you can visit the website, bronxnotforprofits.org, and uh, you'll get all the information that you need. We encourage you don't go anywhere. We'll be back with more Open coming up right after this.